Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous and I mean over the top. Beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this. Unbelievably gorgeous. What is today? It is Wednesday, January 20th, 2021 out here in this undisclosed swamp that somehow managed not to get drained in the last four years. And oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles. Wednesday, January 20th, 2021. It's right about noon. Right about noon on this gorgeous day while I am out enjoying our public lands while I still can. Our swampy public lands. Uh, looking at these gorgeous cypress knees and uh, I know something is something is supposed to be happening today what is it that I was you know before I went to sleep last night I tried to tell myself don't forget to mention whatever it was oh well I'll think of it uh, at some point, uh, anyway, so since I can't remember what's happening on the planet today, uh, obviously it's not that important. Uh, I want to talk about apocaloptimism and hopium. Imagine that. That I was uh, on Netflix last night is kind of like every other night uh, in the past six months. I was on Netflix looking for ways to distract myself from uh, the collapse of a planet and I stumbled across this documentary that I actually watched two or three years ago right there on Netflix and you can find it and I highly recommend it it's, it was made in 2017 and the name of the documentary is Chasing Carl Chasing Carl, and it's essentially about how absolutely doomed coral reefs are uh, all over this planet. I'm pretty sh that, so they said in that documentary, which was made at the end of 2016, <coughs> that 50% uh, of coral reefs had been obliterated off the face of the planet in the last 30 years. So I guess from, what would that be, from 1986 to 2016, that 50% of the remaining coral reefs that were still left in 1986 had been obliterated off the planet. Do your own math, uh, you know, interviewing several of these coral reef scientists just stating plainly that coral reefs will not exist on this planet by the year 2050. That you can kiss coral reefs and the 25% of the life in the ocean that depends on them goodbye by 2050. You know this is I think this documentary is about an hour and a half, about 90 minutes, I'm guessing, uh, long, you know, 90 minutes just, just spelling out uh, the collapse of coral reefs, 100% uh, attributable to humans, mainly climate change, which is, you know, attributing something to climate change is attributing it to humans. Uh, which I'm not sure they ever made that connection. But anyway, it's uh, for 88 minutes is an excellent uh, documentary about the obliteration of the coral reefs off the face of the planet. So what they were doing, what they were centering on was that bleaching event back in 2016, you know, tied for uh, 2020 as the hottest year uh, on the planet in history and of course 2016 was an El Nino year and so these filmmakers went down there and they did kind of you know a time-lapse 
uh, chronicle of the collapse of the Great Barrier Reef where, you know, they went and set up their camera in one position, kind of like I'm doing now. And then they, every 24 hours, for I believe it was 100 days in 2016. So every 24 hours, you know, you know what I'm saying. They would take an identical picture, and then do that. Then speed up the camera at the end of the 100 days, where you could see in real time. Well, not in real time. You, you know, 100 days condensed in uh, probably to about 300 seconds. Uh, how they were claiming, and this is probably an underestimate, that in that bleaching event, 29% of the Great Barrier Reef was destroyed. And uh, anyway, it's some pretty sobering footage. And uh, I think my favorite scene, and this is not about Apocaloptimus, th this is th perhaps the single greatest literal documenting of clueless morons what they were on as the uh, literally as this environmental ecological catastrophe was literally unfolding in real time uh, before anyone's eyes they actually went out on uh, did this <clears throat> scene that very short scene it was the best scene in the in the documentary where the, the guy studying the Carl actually were on a tourist boat uh, out, you know, the, uh, uh, the, this boat full of these absolutely oblivious, clueless moron tourists, uh, you know, just out for a, uh, a cruise on the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, you know, there, there was the DJ on the boat and uh, everyone was dancing and drinking and laughing and having a good time while literally probably, what, 12 feet under, under their very feet uh, was unfolding one of the most horrific uh, ecological catastrophes uh, in the history of humanity and uh, these clueless morons completely oblivious to this fact out there having a good time on a beautiful day uh, just doing what clueless morons do and they look like they were having a lot of fun I wish I'd been there with them I would have been doing the same thing uh, so anyway it, it was just an absolute gorgeous snapshot from the 21st century of the whole notion of, of clueless morons uh, in absolute denial with a capital D about the environmental ecological carnage literally unfolding beneath their feet in front of their uh, clueless faces. Uh, but surprisingly, it, 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 as much as I don't care for clueless morons, for, for some reason, I don't have the level of, and, and it's nothing short of hatred, I'm embarrassed to say, that I do uh, uh, for clueless morons uh, than I do for these apocaloptimists. And uh, again, if you don't know what an apocaloptimist is, it is somebody who clearly understands or should clearly understand how completely doomed we are, how, how completely hopeless the situation is. They, so on, on one hand, uh, they will wax poetic uh, for, for 88 out of 90 minutes uh, about how, you know, 50% of, uh, of the coral reef uh, has disappeared in the last 30 years and the other 50% will be lucky to make it the next 30 years. So you hear that for 88 minutes and, and then in the last two minutes uh, they just completely out of nowhere <clears throat> say but don't worry everything's gonna be okay anyway. 
that we are going to uh, turn this freight, that humanity is going to wake up and turn this freight train around. And the coral reefs are not going to collapse and disappear over the next 30 years. And uh, this, uh, this documentary, uh, Chasing Carl, is the most uh, this vomit-inducing example of this hopium-soaked, apocalyptic crap. And it, it wasn't so much the, the scientist in, in the last two minutes. Uh, it, it was basically some ad man, former advertising executive uh, turned chronicler of the collapse of coral reefs. Uh, it, it, you know, was the main one of these apocalyptimists. Uh, although a couple of these coral researchers were, were guilty uh, as sin of, of the same charge. So, uh, anyway, you know, so right up towards the very end, probably between, assuming the, the thing was 90 minutes long, uh, so in minutes probably 80 to 85, okay, they finally, you know, it was building up, showing the, uh, these fast-forwarded uh, pictures they took of just, just how in 100 days, 29% of what some people describe as the largest living superorganism on planet Earth, the Great Barrier Reef, obliterated off the face of the planet uh, in, in 100 days. They, they did this good overlap of the Great Barrier Reef over the eastern uh, U.S. seaboard, and and it showed the area of uh, coral reef uh, that was uh, destroyed in 2016, and what it basically was. Imagine every tree from uh, Washington D.C. to Maine dying in 100 days. Imagine driving from Washington D.C. to Maine and not seeing one live tree. That was the level of devastation in, in 2016. And so, you know, they were showing, so they had this presentation at this meeting of these uh, coral reef scientists. I, I mean, tears flowing down their faces in this, uh, th these grief-stricken uh, auditorium of, of coral reef researchers uh, uh, fully understanding what they were witnessing in front of their eyes was, was the collapse of one of the most biodiverse uh, important ecosystems on the planet happening in real time in their lifetimes. And uh, so they go from that absolutely brutal, in-your-face uh, document, chronicle of the collapse. And then there's this little segue. Uh, it goes from that. Then the next thing they do is they show this was, uh, you know, after the bleaching event killed 29% of the Great Barrier Reef. So then what they did, they spent about a minute, uh, they spent about a minute showing footage of them going to a section of the reef that was not destroyed and how absolutely beautiful and glorious and that, okay, 29% uh, was destroyed, but hey guys, look at this, 71% of uh, the Great Barrier Reef, and uh, so they went showing what wasn't destroyed. And now I don't know, I'm just guessing, this was filmed I think at the end of 2016, so say four years ago this video footage was taken, I would be, uh, well I would be 67% sure 
that that piece of barrier reef that they were showing as an example of what was still left uh, to cheer you up at the end uh, was destroyed this well in 20 now last year in 2020 I think it was that 67 percent of if I'm remembering correctly from uh, earlier this year that they declared 67 percent from 29 percent four years ago to 67 percent now and of course as you have to keep making this asterisk this was not an El Nino event and if anything it was a La Nina event that more coral was bleached in the year 2020 with no El Nino to help than was uh, destroyed in 2016. And so my guess is that that, uh, I'm taking a wild doomer guess here that if you went back to that very spot uh, today, it would look like, a, you know, a, I guess Dresden after the, the bombing. Uh, and then, of course, and then, then at the very, very end, they, uh, you know, suggest how we're going to turn this around after, uh, after interviewing how many coral reef scientists talking about that 100% of coral reefs will be gone by the year 2050, uh, showing all of this footage uh, in, including this footage of these clueless morons, they suggest that we're going to turn it around and, and, and the, the implication at least, uh, if not the outright statement, is they talked about how many countries had promised to switch to clean energy. I guess in the next, what, 10, 20, 30 years, and then how many American cities had made a pledge, a completely unenforceable uh, voluntary pledge to switch to clean energy. Uh, and this, this absolutely, uh, again, this vomit-inducing little hopium-filled song uh, at the end of it. I mean, it really made you want to puke. You, you know, I wanted, when, when that guy, that, that former, he, 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 I think it, if he wasn't joking, he was a toilet paper advertising executive turned uh, chronicler of the collapse. Uh, you know, after spearheading this effort to chronicle the collapse, uh, actually looked at the camera with no trace of irony and said, this is why I am so optimistic. I guess because, what, uh, uh, Austin, Texas, claims it will switch to clean energy by the year 2050. You know, I, I, I really wanted to, if, if I had had a way to reach through the ethers and strangle the idiot, I would have done it. I, I was absolutely enraged. And I, and I just don't understand this. My, and, and, it's, and I'm not alone in this. Other, I know uh, some of you other doomers and collapsitarians are on, are on board with me. I do not know why I, I let these apocalyptimists trigger me so much uh, and, and just send me in, into an absolute frothing purple rage uh, against these idiots. Much more, as I say, I'm much more triggered by these idiots than I am uh, you know, just your average, run-of-the-mill, ignorant, uh, clueless moron in denial uh, who has never considered 
uh, the collapse of the coral reefs or anything else. Ne never crossed their minds. Never crossed their minds. Uh, I, I'm, I'm talking about these people uh, who, who know damn well that we're not pulling this, uh, that we're not turning this freight train around and then and spouting this crap. Uh, why does it make me so livid? And uh, I, I'm really wrestling with this because I don't like to be this livid all the time. Uh, it's, you know, if you are a true doomer and you do realize as these uh, hopium-soaked, apocalyptimist, uh, should realize that we are doomed, that the coral reefs are doomed, the rainforests are doomed, uh, uh, the Arctic is doomed, uh, civilization is doomed, humanity is doomed, all of our fellow earthlings are doomed, this planet is doomed. Uh, if, if, if you realize that and you understand their are no solutions that the only thing left to do from this point the only thing left that you can do at this point other than not breeding if you are still of breeding age i always put that asterisk is it is figure out how to negotiate the rest of your life carrying around this knowledge that we are doomed and there's nothing that you or anybody else is going to do to change the situation. And y every person needs to decide for themselves uh, j just how to face this, uh, th this terrible, horrific truth. Uh, you know, look it straight in the eye, uh, accept it into your heart, your, your, your mind, your heart, and every cell of your body and, and decide for yourself how you are going to negotiate the rest of your life. Uh, you know, where you're going to live, what you're going to do for a living, who uh, you are going to spend the, the rest of your days on this collapsing planet with. And if these apocaloptimists choose to negotiate the, the, their remaining days uh, on this collapsing planet, uh, living in a fairy tale, thinking that the Easter Bunny uh, or Rumpelstiltskin or Santa Claus or whoever uh, is going to come down here in the 11th hour and 59th minute and save them uh, and this planet, then so what? It doesn't matter uh, it, it, at this point what these people think. It, it, it makes no difference uh, whether you are a true blue doomer who understands that we're doomed and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. It doesn't matter if you're one of these Christians or uh, other religious people. And, you know, it, it, I, I don't even get as triggered by, by like, Christians a, a, as I do these apocaloptimist, hopium-filled idiots. Uh, so what? Since it makes no difference and, and there's nothing you're going to do about it, if that is their choice to, uh, to live in, 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 in this fairy tale, uh, you know, ignorance is bliss. So what? Why do I care? It makes no difference. Uh, it, it, it makes no difference. Uh, on, on the choices I make in my life, how to uh, negotiate and comport uh, myself in, 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 in my remaining days, it makes no difference what these idiots think. So why am I so charged? Why do I get so triggered by these idiots? Uh, anyway, I'm going to sit here and meditate on that. 
here in this beautiful little uh, swamp out in the middle of nowhere here on uh, January 20th, 2021. <clears throat> and try to remember what is it going on on this planet that I'm supposed to be thinking about. Anyway, you get out there and enjoy your public lands and your swamps that miraculously did not get drained in the last four years. Well, you still can. And do watch Chasing Carl on uh, Netflix. Bye, guys.